Hey guys, just a bit of information real quick about the Russian Revolution. So, once upon a time, we had this thing called World War I. Well, let's backtrack a bit. There was this guy, his name was Tsar Nicholas, and he was not exactly the best ruler. He married this lady, her name was Alexandria, and she was a granddaughter of Queen Victoria of England, because all the royals at this time period were related to each other probably still are in some way. So they got married, and on the day of their wedding, there was this big um, protest, basically, in the streets, because the peasants were like, we have no food. Um, how are you having this big expensive wedding party when we have no food? And the royal couple was like, maybe we shouldn't have our wedding party. And they were like, mm, nah, let's have our wedding party. So they did. This is my unamused face. Now, this particular couple had five children. Their daughters, Olga, don't be rude, Tatiana, Mari, and Anastasia. Then they had a little son. His name was Alexei. Now, Alexei had this disease called hemophilia, which basically meant that his blood didn't clot, so he would get bruises and they would just spread out over his whole arm. And if he got a cut, he could die from bleeding to death because his blood would not naturally clot. And they were really concerned because he was a kid and he liked to run and jump and he was always getting, and they had to like carefully keep him from getting scraped up. However, uh, they found this guy who showed up and his name was Rasputin. And I'll have a picture of him at the end of this video so you can see exactly what this man looked like. Because that is an important part of this story. He was not exactly a nice, happy dude. He was, um, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Creepy. That's the best way I can think to describe Rasputin. So Rasputin was there and he was a hypnotist and also apparently a big hit with the ladies. But basically, he showed up and he's like, I can help the poor little Sarvich, Tarsevich. I'm bad with Russian names sometimes, and I apologize. I'm like, I can help him. So he would use hypnosis to calm down little Alexei and to calm down his hysterical mother. I was like, my child is dying. It's my fault. Which actually, it was because hemophilia is passed down through the female lines, which is ironic because Queen Victoria was a carrier of hemophilia. And she married off her daughters and granddaughters to, like, every monarchy in Europe, which meant that they all got this disease somewhere. So, good job, Vicky. So that all's happening. Um, that's, so that's happening, right? Also, Rasputin had this weird and creepy habit of showing up in the palace, like, in the middle of the night and wanting to hang out with the Grand Duchesses, which was creepy. So... But they were like, he was like a good family friend, and he was the only person who could help poor little Alexei. And also, his, so the grand, the queen, excuse me, the queen was like, he's awesome. So she was listening to his advice for a lot of things about policy. Why was the queen making policy decisions? Well, the queen was making policy decisions because her husband was currently off fighting in World War I. And um, World War I, they'd gone in on the side of the British to help stop the other countries um, from advancing and from taking over. Well, actually, no. Basically, World War II is complicated and weird. Basically, the countries all divided up as allies, and it was like, don't poke my friend. If you look at, basically, for instance, like, if you look at Russia... If you mess with Russia, you're messing with me. And someone messed with Serbia, and Russia's like, well, if you mess with Serbia, you're messing with me. So someone messed with Serbia, so then they also messed with Russia, then they also messed with France. It was a whole big mess. Um, the Archduke of Austria was shot by a Serbian nationalist, and basically the entire continent evolved. It's just, just war. War. And the U.S. was like, what is happening? But there were also countries that weren't on the continent that were still involved, which is why it's a world war, because there was so much going on and because the U.S. had allies in Europe and it was messing up trade. It was this whole big thing. So Russia's involved, right? So Russia's involved in the war. Now, Russia has a problem with a lot of things. And one of those things is that they don't have enough ammunition for all the soldiers, but they can't only send 
some soldiers. They have to send the whole military. So they were sending soldiers out there with guns with no bullets. I mean, like, just poke them. So the Russians are dying, and the people are not exactly happy. There's not much food. Their families are dying in the battlefield. It's not going well. Meanwhile, at home, okay, so people are dying in the military like crazy. Meanwhile, Alexandria is listening to Rasputin, and he's not very good at this whole thing. He's giving her a lot of bad advice. So it's all just bad. And again, just like the Lord of the Flies, this is the quick Russian Revolution according to Cav. I'm missing details. I know I'm missing details. I haven't taught Russian history in a while. I'm sorry. This is just kind of to give you the background information. You will learn more when you take history with Mr. Warner or Miss Perfold. So, anyway, train of thought derailed. Oh, yes. So that's all happening in Russia, right? Hmm. It's not, it's not great. Well, there's a cousin of the Tsar who's like, this Rasputin guy is causing a lot of problems. We probably should deal with him. Okay? So they all get back from the war, and they're planning on how they're going to get rid of Rasputin. Their plan, at first, they're going to poison him. I'm laughing because they poison him, and it doesn't work. He's still alive and kicking. So then, they hang him. Still alive. Poisoned, hung. They shoot him. Still alive. Stab, still alive. The thing that finally kills him is... Oh, he shot multiple times, by the way. Finally, they throw him in the river, the icy river, and he finally drowns. After having been poisoned, shot, stabbed, and hung. Okay, so this guy, he's pretty hardy. The cartoon Anastasia actually... Um, the idea that he had some sort of unholy pact with hell... Like, there was some, there was some, uh, agreement with that from the people who were alive at the time. If you were in the classroom, we're probably going to be watching a couple clips from Anastasia. If you are not in the classroom, check out the Animal Farm playlist to find some clips from Anastasia for your own benefit and enjoyment. Because, of course, the Grand Duchess Anastasia that I mentioned, like, a while ago, is, of course, the lost Grand Duchess Anastasia. That movie has a lot of problems, but it's still delightful. So Rasputin's dead. The queen is really sad. The empress is really sad. And everyone else is like, woo, Rasputin's dead. We can get back to normal. No. So then they have to get rid of those relatives who killed him. Some are killed for treason. Some are exiled. It's not going well. But think it's already too bad, too late. So now... The Russian population, there's two different groups, okay, of rebellious Russians. One of them is like, we just want to exile the royal family. We can start over from scratch, build a better country, because this is, this is not great. This is not ideal. And the other group is like, let's kill the royal family and start over from scratch. So there's these two groups, and they both decided independently that they're going to go in and take out the royal family. Some, like, take them out of the country, and some, like, take them out. And so they're both marching towards where the royal family is. And um, the murdery group gets there first. So they remove the royal family, which is also interesting because the Tsar had actually abdicated the throne before all this happened. Because he's like, man, things are not going great. Um, all of the people, there's a lot of people around him who are like, you should probably abdicate and let someone else be in charge for a while. And he's like, yeah. he was basically forced to abdicate. But then you still have this murdery group that basically removes him and his entire family. And they bring them to this little house and they're under house arrest. And after, because basically they were like, the idea of murdering the royal family seemed like a good idea on principle. But no one actually wants to kill them. Because they're not going to let them go. They can't let them go. Because then they look weak. But they can't, they don't want to kill them. Because they didn't actually, like they've, they've won. They got what they wanted. So they've got them in house arrest. And they're running the country. It's it's okay so they're doing all this right and then the other group shows up the non-murdery group is moving in because they don't really like what's happening so they're gonna go in and they're gonna take over and get the royal family out but if you let the royal family out then one of them could come back and retake over the country so with that other group coming in to seize control of the capital 
And the murder group is like, we have no choice. We have to kill them now. So they brought the entire royal family down into the basin of this house, sat them down, and opened fire. Um, the Grand Duchesses had sewn diamonds. They were thinking they were going to be allowed to leave the country, and they didn't want to come back. So they had sewn diamonds into their corsets so that they would have some money to live on when they left. Because they were related to, like, all of Europe. So they figured they could go and, like, live in the French court or, like, live in Denmark, and they'd be fine. Um, so the bullets start ricocheting off the diamonds and just, like, hitting everybody. And then they all So they all fall to the ground, and then... Something happens, like Anastasia screams, or one of the Grand Duchesses screams, and they're like, oh, they're not dead. So they start stabbing everybody with bayonets, and just going to town. And so they're dead. Um, so they take the bodies, and they throw them in a mass grave. And they're so mangled, the only way they recognize them as the royal family is because they recognize the dog. Which is incredibly sad. I mean, it's all sad, obviously. Um... The, the idea that Anastasia survived comes because there were two bodies missing. Alexei and one of the Grand Duchesses. One of the younger Grand Duchesses. And Anastasia is the youngest. So the idea that they survived, and that was also just a very nice idea. The idea that someone survives this horrible, horrible massacre and gets out of Russia and is living happily somewhere else is really appealing. Right? Um, it's not likely they did find them later in another grave, why they were in a separate grave, nobody knows. Um, but that actually, that myth, that wasn't discovered until I think the early 2000s. Um, there was a woman in the night, um, not long after, who actually convinced a lot of people that she was Anastasia. So, with the royal family disposed of, this new non-violent group comes in. Non-violent, right? They come in, they take over, and there's two. So we got Lenin, who's basically in charge of that group. And he's doing a pretty good job. Um, people seem to like him. Things are going all right. Then he dies, and there's a bit of a power vacuum. There's this guy named Trotsky, and there's this guy named Stalin. And they kind of fight it out. And Trotsky ends up fleeing the country, where he will mysteriously die not long after. Hmm, weird. I wonder how that happened. And Stalin takes over. And Stalin slowly, gradually, sneakily transforms Russia or the Soviet Union, from a communist state into a dictatorship, um, sends his political opponents up to Siberia, sends his secret police to murder other people. You know. Yeah. Which reminds me, if I did not say it in the other video about Animal Farm, the dogs represent the secret police. I don't think I did. So, the puppies. So yeah, so that is the basic um, rundown of the Russian Revolution. Like I said, I have not taught Russian history in a while, so some of the details are a little um, a little fuzzy, but that's basically the gist. As far as reading Animal Farm goes, those are the things that you need to know, and those are the pieces that will need to be there to help it make sense to you. All right, um, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.